not get distracted. He was focused. He was focused. There was a time that even when he was busy gathering the disciples, one of them said, uh, 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 Nathaniel said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Hey, can you imagine? Safira, can you imagine that somebody will come to your house and say, can anybody, anything good come from this house? That's an offense, serious offense in, the, in your house. But that is what they said about Jesus. His own disciple to be said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Nazareth was a small village at the back of the hill. So anything that came from there, it was like, it was like, you are not really that important. Because you are in a small village there and we are from the big side. So if, there, if you have anything to bring, who wants to listen? But Jesus was brought up in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem, but brought up in Nazareth. Amen? Ben was thinking and wondering, can anything good come from Nazareth? Little did they know and understand that the best would have come from Nazareth. Today, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, as we celebrate the birth of the Savior, remember that the sin of him, can anything good come from Nazareth? So, if they ever say, can anything good come from you, you can say, sure enough, it can. Something good came from Nazareth. So something good must come from me too. Amen? Because I have the living word of God that teaches me all things, that prepares me, that nurtures me, and shows me how to go about every situation. If Jesus was able to do it, I can do it. If only you could believe and see that. If only you could understand that indeed, something good can come from you. Because something good came from Nazareth. Amen? Jesus did not allow those words to stop him. Jesus did not allow the persecution to stop him. He was focused. I said that even his own mother and brothers were wondering, have he gone mad? But he was focused. He was on the assignment that needed to be fulfilled. He came with the awareness, knowing that he would have to go to the cross. We are here. On one thing we know is that it is appointed for man to live once and then death follows. We will not know when the day will come that the Lord will take us. But Jesus, he knew he had to go and in such manner he had to go. We don't know how we will go, but we will know we will go. So let it be, let it be today, that as long as we are here, let us not waste our time in unnecessary things, but let us celebrate life. You see, most of the time when people die and go on, that is when people celebrate life through a big party, festive, the most expensive funeral. But what about the living? Those who are alive, who are busy doing great and wonderful things. The dead is dead and gone. And always judgment. But we are alive. Why can't we be celebrated now? When Jesus was walking about this earth, there were times that he was celebrated. But there were times also that he was persecuted. And even now, as we are here, let us celebrate the moment that we can celebrate because there will be moments also that we will be persecuted. Amen? So it's all about understanding the Messiah who went ahead of us and show us how life would be. He said to us, great things I have done, but greater things you will do. If only you can believe it and see it, you will have the peace, the rest, and the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, how sweet and wonderful is that name. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. He came to show us the way. He came to lead us back to Christ. He came to redeem us from our sins and our transgression. Oh, it was not easy, but he fulfilled the assignment. So today, as we are celebrating the birth of the Messiah, as we are celebrating Jesus, I told you, I was going to tell you about Jesus. 
And I love this topic so much. And the reason for that is because it gives me so much joy and peace and understanding the reason why we are here and the things that we have to go through in life. If Jesus could have do it, if Jesus went through it, who are you and I that we will not go through it? But one thing is for sure, the Lord told us he will never leave us, neither forsake us. He is with us. He is with us at all time. Amen? Because he is in us. There's his spirit that dwells in us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. See, when the time when Jesus was on the earth, the Holy Spirit was not there. The Holy Spirit came after. It was after Jesus was crucified and went to the Father, the Holy Spirit came. And that's when we celebrate also the Pentecost. That's the day that the Holy Spirit came when the apostles and then were in the upper room. The 120 people were praying in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came on earth. Until then, and from then till now, the Spirit of, of the God, the living God, is still in us. Amen? Jesus. Jesus. I spoke about Jesus, his birth, his life. Let's see about how it went with his death. Jesus. I said his birth was, was in an unusual manner. And even his death was in an unusual manner. And I remember, so when I was studying this, what was, went through, what was going through my mind is, but God. But God. He is indeed the God that does the impossible. Because when we look at how Jesus died, he died on the cross of Calvary. And next to him were also two others that were persecuted and crucified. But Jesus died and he was resurrected on the third day. And that's when we celebrate Easter. Amen. But what I love so much about this path is the way how he was resurrected. Jesus came on earth and he performed many signs and wonders. Just as the disciples also performed many signs and wonders. Because Jesus taught them. He instructed them. He prepared them and he sent them out to do their assignment. But in all the Bible we could see that when a person died and that person is being resurrected, there was always an intervention of men. There was always someone at that near to the body praying, doing all kind of manner of things. Whether it is just speak or call, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus was resurrected. There was an intervention of men to resurrect the body. But Jesus, there was no intervention of men to resurrect his body. Men did already the work ahead before by praying. And prophesying that the, that the Messiah would come and be resurrected, resurrected on the third day. But when he was resurrected, the Bible does not mention that there was a man there praying, laying hands on him to resurrect him. But the Bible does mention us that it was the Spirit of God, that same Spirit that is in us, that resurrected him. Amen? So today, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, let us remember him in such manner that anytime we think about him, that we will know that he is and he was and he will always be the greatest man that has walked here on earth and now seated at the right hand of the Father. And with a promise for all who believe in him, according to John 3 16, but for our Father loves us so much, he said, For all who believe in his son Jesus. Let's read that chapter. Everybody know that chapter. As you evangelize, you always hear that chapter. John 3, 16. Can somebody read it for me? I want to just read it the way how it is. Because that is the love of our father for us. That showed us how much he loved us. That showed us how much Jesus understood also his assignment. Love. It was because of love we had to go through. He had to go through all what he did for us. And he fulfilled the assignment. Can somebody read it for us, please? John 3, 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we should ever perish. 
she will have everlasting life. Forever and ever. Are you quoting it the way it's supposed to be, Mother? Please quote it. Because you missed one important word there. 16. John 3, 16. Yes, quote it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. For whosoever believed in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. That is what love does. That is what love does. So that's why I said when Jesus came, he came for us. He came that we will receive and accept what he have to give, to offer unto us. He did not come for his own. Because like I said at the beginning, he was in heaven, seated with the Father as a royalty. But he left his heavenly throne to come down here on earth. He left royalty where everything is beautiful, where everything is so wonderful, to come down here on earth where there is sin, where there is pain, where there is hatred, where there is persecution. He came down in the human form for you and I, that whoever believed in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What a sacrifice that that man did for us. What a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. So people of God today, as you celebrate the birth of Jesus, remember always who he is. Why did he come? And what he had to go through for you and I. Amen. So I hope today you are blessed. Because this is about Jesus. As we are celebrating Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And when you know who he is, and you're able to, in simple words, explain who Jesus is. It brings life. It brings light. It brings joy. It brings peace and comfort in your soul and in your spirit. There are many preachings. Whether you're shouting, whether you're jumping, whether you're running. But the bottom line is still, do you really understand?